So, welcome to our very first Twitch session. Uh, my name is Clinton Freeman. I'm the lead programmer here at Impulsonic. And today we want to walk you through how you can integrate Phone on 3D into your Unreal Engine 4 projects. So the, the session will be composed of four sections, the first of which will go over some highlights from the 1.3 release, which came out last Friday. Um, then we'll actually go through and add some spatialized sound to a simple scene. Afterward, we'll look at some common issues that might crop up when you're doing that. And finally, we'll have some Q&A at the end. So the bulk of the talk will be in, in this section where we add some spatialized audio to a simple scene. And we're going to do eight things. We'll download the plugin, we'll install it, create a project, add some spatialized sound, go in and play it in the editor. And then we want to compare with panning to see what the difference is. Then we'll package the game and we'll actually run the game. So we'll take you all the way through the entire process. For the Q&A, um, you can ask us questions via the Twitch chat. You can tweet at Impulsonic or use the hashtag phoneon, or you can email support at impulsonic.com. So for, uh, for the 1.3 release, it came out last Friday, like I mentioned, um, and it included three important integrations for phoneon 3D. Unreal 4.8.3 with native audio, 4.8.3 with FMOD Studio, and Unity 5.2 using the native audio's uh, spatialization SDK. In addition to the integrations, we also came out with a support page, which you can find at support.impulsonic.com. The support page includes uh, a knowledge base full of information about the various products, as well as a forum that you can use if you can't find exactly what you're looking for. So let's get started adding the audio to a scene. So the first thing that you'll want to do is come to the downloads page on Impulsonic's website. And what you'll see is, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, this plugin for UE4. And you want to go on and download the zip file. Um, so I've already done that and unzipped it. So let me close this up. OK, I've already, I've already unzipped it over here. Um, so let me open that up. Inside of the zip file, you're going to find three items. Engine, Phone on 3D Project Content, and the Phone on 3D Manual. The manual is what you want. Uh, to open so that it'll show you everything that you need to do to actually install the plugin. So let's open that up. D uh, it has a chapter on Unreal, so the Unreal chapter explains how to actually install the native, uh, the native plugin. And there's only a few things that we need to do. So, so the first thing that we need to do is install Fun on 3D to the engine. And this just requires us to copy a folder. So let's go in and do that. What you'll need to do is navigate to your 4.8 directory. In my case, it's in C, Program Files, Epic Games, 4.8. And inside of here, you're going to have an engine folder. And what you want to do is copy the engine folder found in our zip file over into your 4.8 directory. And when you do that, it's going to copy all the necessary plugin files. So if you look in Plugins, runtime, you'll see Phone on 3D. And it has all the necessary files there. So the plugin should be installed. Next, we'll go on and open, open up uh, Unre the Unreal Engine and create a new project. So for this, for this demonstration, we'll be creating a first-person blueprint project. And you can name it whatever you want. So we'll go on and create that. If you look back at the manual, the only other thing that we need to do before we can actually begin spatializing our sources is enable Phone on 3D for your project. It's going to come enabled by default, but um, 
but we'll go in and check it anyway. So once, once the project is open, what you want to do is come up to Window and go to Plugins. And over here on your left, there are a bunch of categories, one of which is Audio, which is what you want to click on. And you'll see Photo and 3D listed, and it should be enabled by default. Since it's enabled, we're good to go, and we can move on to the next step. So when you actually go to begin spatializing your sources, we have a brief section on, on how to do that, and it's pretty easy. So, so what I want to do is add, uh, I'm going to add a sphere to the scene, and then attach an ambient, ambient sound actor to it, or component to it. That way we'll be able to see where the sound is coming from when we actually play it in-game. So let me go on and put a sphere in here. So you drag out a sphere. And I'm going to make it chrome so it looks nice. So let's see. I'll do chrome. OK, so now we have a nice sphere. And then we'll come over here and add a component to it. So we go on and add an audio component. And let's choose a sound. So for this, I'll just do fire. Um, it's a good enough sound. So when you actually go to spatialize, spatialize your source, you want to come down to the attenuation section. And you'll notice allow spatialization is checked. So that's good. You want to check override attenuation and expand attenuation override. Inside of this section, you're going to see spatialization algorithm. And it's going to be set to spatialization default by default. So we click this, and you'll see spatialization HRTF. And when you click this, it'll start routing the audio through the Fun on 3D plugin. So that's all that we really have to do. And now our audio source is going to be spatialized. So let's go on and listen. So that's pretty neat. Um, the other thing that we want to do is compare that with panning to see how it sounds different. One of, one of the things that 3D Audio is going to give you, you'll notice that I, I looked left to right, and then I looked up and down, and then I turned around so that I uh, heard it from behind. It'll give you a better sense of up and down than you're going to see with panning. So. Um, let's go in and click over here and turn it back to default, and then that's going to use the panning algorithm. So let's go in and play it again. So you should be able to tell that the 3D audio gives you a better sense of up and down and front to back. So that's cool. So we, that's all that you have to do to get our, our plugin working in your game and start spatializing sounds. Uh, we want to show you how to actually go on and package the game. So uh, if we come back to the manual, there's a section on packaging instructions. So let's go on and go down there. So package, packaging your project consists of two major steps. So the first is copying an additional folder into your project directory. So let's go in and do that. You'll remember that we had three, three items in our zip file, one of which is Phone on 3D project content. 
what we want to do is copy that folder into our project content directory. Let me go on and open that up. So it, in my case, we have uh, documents, unreal projects, my project, content. So you go into your content and copy that folder over. Okay, after you've done that step, come back into the Unreal Editor and go to File, Package Project, Packaging Settings. It's going to open up this window and what you want to do is click on the Advanced tab to show these extra options. Down at the bottom, you'll see additional non-asset directories to copy. We want to add an element by clicking the plus button. And what this is going to give you is a directory choos chooser. So we click on this, and it's going to open up a window where we can browse for a folder to include when we package. By default, it'll go to your content directory that we were just in. And if you expand it, you'll see the folder that we copied. Select that folder and hit OK. So that's all that you have to do for that step. And that'll make sure that Phonon 3D is able to find the HRTF file that it needs. So let's close that out and go back to the manual to see what else we have to do. The other set that we need to do only applies to Blueprint projects. When you have a Blueprint project, what you want to do is convert it into a C++ project so that our plugin will get compiled with uh, during packaging. In order to do that, it's, it's doesn't, doesn't take much. All you have to do is add a, a C++ file to your project, and Unreal will automatically generate a Visual Studio solution file, and our plugin will get compiled with that. So what you do is go back to your project. In the content browser, click on Add New, and click on New C++ Class. And you'll get this wizard. We don't really care about what's going on in here. We just want the solution file. So go on and click Next. And go on and click Create Class. And that'll go through the process of creating the solution file and so forth. At this point, we'll be ready to package whenever it's done doing this. Um, and packaging just fo follows the normal procedure where uh, you can package for Windows 64-bit. Um, and I've already done this, so we don't have to go through this process. Um, we can just go on and go to the actual game. So if I can minimize this. So it'll take a second, but. OK. So I went ahead and did all these steps and packaged it earlier. Um, so I actually already have an executable that we can look at. So let's launch that. All right, cool. So at this point, we've taken you through downloading the plugin on our website all the way through to packaging an executable that you can ship, uh, you can ship your game with. And that's it. That's the extent of what you have to do. So we'd, we'd like to go over a few common issues that you might experience during this process that, we, that we've seen. Um, so to do that, we want to come on over to our support page at, um, let's see, here we go, um, at support.impulsonic.com. So if you go there, you're going to see, like I mentioned earlier, the knowledge base and the, f and the forums and some other, some other options. But what we want is in the knowledge base, so let's go on over there. So when you, when you come over here, you're going to see um, a bunch of articles that we've written about 
things that, that people might want to know about, about Phonon. We have a section on Phonon 3D, and within that session, we have known issues. And we have two known issues for the UE4 plugin. One is the audio is silent in the package game. And the second is that the Phonon 3D module cannot be found in the package game. So let's click on the first. If you package the game and you don't hear any sounds, the most likely cause is that Phonon 3D can't find the HRTF file. So you'll remember the Phonon 3D project contents folder that we copied over and the setting that we added in the packaging settings. That's to fix this problem. So if you don't hear audio in your game, it's most likely that you forgot to do this step. Okay. For the other, the other problem is that the Phonon 3D module cannot be found in the package game. In this, in this situation, you'll run your package game and you're going to get this message pop up saying it failed to load the module because it can't be found. And this is a symptom of, of, not, of not adding a C++ file to a Blueprint project. So that's the reason that we added the C++ file. Um, if you do what we did earlier, where you add a C++ file and, and UE4 generates your Visual Studio solution, then this error should go away and everything should work as normal. That's pretty much it for the known issues. If you have additional issues, uh, you can hop on over to the forum and there's the phone on issues section that where you can start a thread and we'll, we'll uh, look at it and see, see what we can do about it.